That story at 6. Halloween is coming up, you know, and there was an interesting article in the Post-Gazette this morning. Boy George and Michael Jackson are in at Halloween parties this year. Count Dracula, President Reagan, Richard Nixon is still one of the most popular fright masks. And we're going to have Holly Dobkin a little bit later on in the show with some kids, and we're going to make some Halloween costumes. It might surprise you at how easy they are to make and how good they look after you're all done. Corporate tragedies. Think about this. McDonald's had the massacre in the restaurant in California, the Tylenol scare, uh, Girl Scout cookies being tampered with, pickles contaminated. Why do people do this? We have an expert on this coming up. And we also have a man who collects political paraphernalia. And guess whose campaign button this is? Listen to this. See if I can get it turned on. Think about that, will you? Because the show comes up next, right here. Now you might say to yourself when you meet this next man, what in the world is a, a junior high school principal doing collecting all of this political paraphernalia and memorabilia, huh? Well, he's one of the best collectors, in fact, received national attention for his collection that's displayed at Belmar Junior High School. Stephen Russell is here with, uh, I guess, just a small part of your collection, right, Steve? Uh, very small. Uh, the collection goes back at least 100 years as far as political memorabilia is concerned. And uh, this interest took place uh, back when John F. Kennedy ran for president, and I was uh, a youngster in the fifth grade. And uh, this is what it's mushroomed into. And now I have the opportunity to share it with uh, the uh, youngsters in the school district, and I find it a great motivational force. Are kids interested in this? I was interested in watching the reactions uh, the other day when I put the 1984 political buttons out and they were all swarming around the uh, area of the exhibit. So, uh, Well, it's nice to foster an interest at that age, huh? I think it's very important to motivate youngsters and especially with all the competition we have today, getting the attention of uh, young people, I think this is a good means. Can we take a look at some of these, Steve? Sure. Uh, now, this one is for Mondale Ferraro. Right. And a couple of interesting things in here. Uh, Will Rogers never met Ronald Reagan. That button came out last year, an anti-Reagan uh, button. And uh, you have to explain to younger people who Will Rogers was, yeah. but of course the older people get a big chuckle out right, of that. But for, for the youngsters, Will Rogers was the man who said, I never met a man I didn't like. Right. And uh, this one, the Reagan bush bears a bitter fruit. Anti-labor, pro-rich, anti-poor, etc. Let me have that one, and I'll put it down. Grab that next one there, Steve, because some of these are, are really fascinating. Now, most of these items are from the uh, 1984 Republican Convention, and luckily I had a number of friends there who were able to pick these things up for me. Look at this. That look, looks more like John Wayne than it does Ronald Reagan. I think that was done purposely, and the likeness I didn't realize until I received the button, but there's no question there's a great likeness there to John Wayne and well, with Ronald Reagan. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, little sister. <laughs> Let's take a look at the... Did I hear a boo in the audience there? Small audience this morning. Now, this has got some... Now, I tell you what, uh, I'm, you have to watch the kids on this one, but uh, there's one sign here. I'm only going to point to this one. It's over here on the right, and... Uh, it just shows that even presidential campaigns are sometimes misguided when it comes to printing things that they can't take back right away, right? I think that that was Jimmy Carter's real reaction to Edward Kennedy's entrance into the 1980 uh, <laughs> Democratic race. Let's take another, a look at another one of these. Now, uh, Jerry Ford was not in office very long, and a lot of people think one of the most memorable things about Jerry Ford was Betty. Nice big picture of the both of them. That's a six inch button and uh, six inch buttons are rare, but this one is uh, quite nice of Betty and she looks in very good shape. And there's no question about that. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Oh, George McGovern and R. Bernard Shriver, Come Home America. I guess maybe I'd forgotten about that one a little bit. This one, Robin McGovern? Yes, that was uh, <laughs> to represent to uh, 
rob the uh, rich and give it to the uh, poor people as far as taxes were concerned. I bet somebody was ultimately embarrassed about that one, huh? I don't doubt that. Now here's a man who still has one of the best-selling fright wigs at Halloween, Richard M. <laughs> Nixon. And uh, Spiro Agnew, do you know that he still will not grant an interview to anybody? He's so bitter about all of that stuff that I went on. I didn't know that, Jack. Yep, just read that in the paper the other day. Let's take a look at the final two here, because now you're getting back to, uh, I guess, a man that almost everybody admires. You think that he's one of the most significant people in our history. I think he was a very inspirational leader, and I think he was a great motivator. And unbelievably, in my generation, I would say that uh, no president has come closer to the image and the spirit of John F. Kennedy until Ronald Reagan. And uh, the age difference is great, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. We've got a couple right here, and I had forgotten about this. Uh, Ace, can you get a kind of a, a tight shot of this one right here? That's a rooster, and you said that the rooster was the sign of? Of the New Frontier, the program in which John F. Kennedy uh, brought into the White House in 1961. Yeah, I had forgotten that. And let's take a look at this last one here, because this goes all the way back to when, Steve? Well, these items would go back to about 1888, the Harrison Morton uh, Cleveland Hendricks election. And those are some of these items here. The first buttons as we know them today came out in 1896, the celluloid button. Is that somebody rapping on our door there? Don't, don't pay any attention to that, neither Democrat nor Republican. But uh, I understand that uh, you are going to be doing some things uh, with Channel 4 for some promotional announcements. Yes, we're going to work on the 1972, 76, and 80, and 84 election. Because some... Paul Long and, uh, and uh, Don, Cannon. Don Cannon have been together for four presidential elections, and that is, that's a record. I don't know whether we were supposed to talk about that or not, but uh, thank you, Steve. Nice to have you here. Well, it was nice Tremendous to be here, Tremendous collection. Jack. Yeah, good thank luck you. to you. And we'll look forward to seeing this on our promos here at Channel 4. And we'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away.